All right, I've just been getting all my fishing stuff ready, heading deep into the marshes of Plaquemines Parish tomorrow with a longtime fishing buddy of mine, Larry Fry. Larry's a guy who's taught me more about speckled trout fishing than absolutely anybody I know. And I've written a book about speckled trout. This is gonna be a fun day. Come along with us. Next time you see me, I'll be in the marsh. All right, Larry and I started the morning on an ill-fated effort trying to catch bass. I think we only caught one or two. So now we're targeting speckled trout in deep water. Right there is Ray Shagnard, owner of Shag Sporting Goods in Metairie. We're fishing right next to him. He welcomed us in. So not barging in, but let's see if we can catch some trout. There he is. Get in the right zone and get a fish. It's a good trout. Got it, Fry? Double? Larry with the double. Yep. Got him. Another double. There he is. Feels decent. There you go, good trout. Larry, what you throwing double rig wise? What you got on? Barely tail on three or something. Three eighths and a quarter? Yeah. That fish was behind the boat. All right, we probably could have sat there and eventually caught a limit, but we decided to move on and see where else we can catch them. So this is trout attempt number two. Real steep ledge here. Front of the boat is in two feet of water, back of the boat's in 13 feet of water. And the water is far from pristine here. It's not pretty at all. It hasn't been pretty in years <laughs> in this area, but the fish are here. You got a fish? All right, we just pulled up on spot number three. Spot number two was a bust. I think Larry's got a double. That's a good omen. First cast double. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Nice, beautiful trout. Beautiful trout. Coming in two at a time. I won't catch two at a time because I'm throwing a single rig. Three eighth ounce depth grip jig head with the limbo slice matrix shad. My favorite deep water rig. Larry's got on a three eighth ounce and a quarter ounce with a curly tail and a shrimp creole. Chartreuse. Curly tail and shrimp creole. Probably won't catch another fish. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Well, there you go. Foul hooked. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the terrain here. I don't feel like I've gotten down yet. Now I'm feeling it. Oh yeah, it's not bad at all. Quite fishable. Oh, good night. Missed him. Oh, missed him again. Oh, there he is. Oh, goodness. Is that a red? Is that a red? It's not a trout, unless he's file hooked. He's fighting really, really weird. We got the same fish? No, that's my bait. Oh, it's a, it's a catfish. That's why it's fighting weird. Yeah, right, freshwater cat. He thumped it too. A friend of mine caught 105 the other day up, up in the prairie. Really? Mm -hmm. Throwing dead bait or what? Yeah. 
What 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 do you fish? Do you fish deep water or what? Good beak of lure here. Beak of lure. You think you'd be catching them every cast? I feel like there's a ton of fish here. We just gotta figure them out. Maybe it was early, early this morning. I got a mind on what it's well. Nah, I don't pay attention to all that. Yeah, well, I have lately. You have? Yeah. You think there's definite correlation? There's one. Feels foul hooked. Nice oh, hooked in the mouth. Yeah. There you go. Way out in the middle. All right. It's like pogies, huh? Some type of shad, maybe river shad. There he is. Ooh, flat bass. Was that a bass? It's a big bass, man. Yeah, Look like you big one. Might have been three pounds. There you go, Fry. Oh, double. Nice. Got him. That's the one you want to take home and eat. Yeah. Give the big ones to everybody else. Not many spots on this boy. Not many spots at all. You look almost like a white trout. I don't know. I've been known. Oh, there he is. I've been known to see him off you know he's there looking at the damn baby. Yep. <laughs> and I just there it's funny how they just... You think a school comes through or you think they just turn on? I think they just move. I think a school comes through. Hooked outside the mouth. Tells you something. It's amazing how often that happens. <laughs> Crap will fuck you up. All right, stop number four for the day. Stop number three looked very promising. The double on the first cast. We caught a few fish there, but kind of slower than it should have been. And that's kind of typical. You gotta do a lot of sticking and moving, but frequently you'll find a, a point that's just absolutely loaded with them. And I think that last spot, Larry and I were talking about it, had fish. They just weren't feeding. Why, I don't know. Tide's moving. Water's not bad at all. We'll see if there's anything here. Oh, that was a good bite. Oh, there he is. Finally got a hook in one. Nice trout. The third bite I've gotten. First connection. Really good fish. You'd be shocked the size of the trout you can catch in these holes this time of year. I mean, it's May. you think these fish would be outside already, but they're in here feasting on baby croakers. That's a big old fat speckled trout. Beautiful fish. Call shag. There's one. That's a speck. Oh yeah, good trout. All right. Real good trout. Let's see how long he is. 16 inches. Beautiful fish. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there's another one. Good trout. Maybe file hook trout. Feels weird. Maybe flounder. What the heck is this? I definitely want to see him. Fighting real weird. I hope you're right. Larry's saying flounder. I don't know. Not feeling. Oh, drum. It's not a Gasper goo though. I think it's a black drum. Well, sixteen put him in a box. No, oh, he's sixteen. These black drum also get in these holes, and these little ones like this are really good to eat. We're gonna measure him, make sure he's legal. I'm pretty sure he is. Oh yeah, he's nineteen inches. These have to be sixteen, just like redfish. Add to the seafood platter. Flounder? No, so. Speck? Yep, nice trout, real nice trout. Pretty, pretty fish. There's one. Another weird feeling fish. Is it another drum? I think it's another drum, Larry. 
Yeah. Yep, I'd bet money on a drum. Mm-mm. Doesn't feel like a red. <laughs> it's his cousin redfish. Well, I would have lost a lot of money. Perfect red too. Trout. There you go. This is I, a sea I didn't know you were hooked up. You got a big black drum, huh? Why you had to get on my line? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he beat you and not me. I was getting a new bait. Larry hooked up into something gigantic. Probably a big black drum. They definitely crowd these holes. Big monster drum. Let me know when you need help. Still got away. He's still mad. Yep, big black drum. There you go. Made his day. Most people would love that. Of course. People from out of town. Like me and you. Yes. Like it's just an inconvenience. But yeah, if you came here from Minnesota and you caught that, your trip would be made. Yeah. Fish on. Doesn't look speckle trouty. Redfish? Redfish? Oh, it's gone. Big red. <laughs> you gonna do the same thing with him? I'm gonna keep him for one of my employees. Oh, okay. Well, there you go, you got him. Larry and I are making our final stop of the day. The tide is rising. It switched around, it's rising pretty hard now. So we'll see what we can find here as we head in. Water looks decent in this area. It's been pretty decent all day, at least fishable. Larry said he fished last week and water was terrible on top, but the fish he was pulling up were black, a sign that the water underneath that dirty water was pretty clean. There he is. There he is. Oh, beautiful. Ah, it's a beautiful fish. And he's not happy. What is that? Oh, those uh, tsunamis? Oh, there we go. Yeah, and Oh, good fish. Man, man. Just incredible. That's a good fish, man. Goodness. He's not that big, but boy, he's, he's acting like he is. I mean, 18, 19 inches. <laughs> it's big enough. That's a chunk, man. That's a good fish. Yeah, you hooked well, buddy. Bad news for you. Good news for me. Yeah, he's too big. Huh? Nobody wants to eat that fish. Kill that fish. I got plenty of people that want to eat it. Get him, Fry. Man, that's a good trout. Well, there we go. All right, there we go. That old. Man, ow! Oh, oh God. Damn it, it's in you? Yeah, it's in me. That ain't worth man. Oh, it's not in me. Oh, it was in me, trust me. <laughs> oh, man, I was going to do the string trick on you. Uh, do all the time. I'm glad we didn't need to do that. <laughs> I've probably done it six times. <laughs> well, with you swinging those double rigs around, I bet you have. Two times with mirrorless. I'm going to get on this side of you. Yeah, Colonel Beatty. Oh, the Army Corps engineers that built all the levees after Katrina. I had a catch. Well, here, five. come back over here. I had a catch five stuck in his head. I'll just run when you hook one. <laughs> I'll bring it on this side. Catch, catch five, five. I had to cut off the swivel and pull that out of his head. Oh God! And, and you did it? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he hit me on the way down. Yes. <laughs> There he is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> this one's gonna surf in. Double. Oh, look at this. This is service, man. It don't happen often. I'm telling you. We'll get used to it. All right, I gotta remember to run when Larry sets the hook. No, I'm, I'm gonna watch out for you. 
Yeah, you said that before that cast. <laughs> I forgot. There he is. Ooh, this boy's got an opinion. They're all beautiful fish. Oh, goodness. Ripped the rod out of my hands. How'd you not have it? There he is. That time he got it. Oh, beautiful. Come on, surf in. That's fine. Put sides in my favor. Yep, now you saw the boat. All rubber stamp, 16, 17 inch fish. And Larry's got one. What a stop. Caught fish all day. Whew. But not one after another like this. This is this is every cast action. Yeah, this bottom bite is definitely better. This deep water bite, definitely better on a rising tide. There he is. There he is. Another big fish. And they're attacking the baits. They're all taking them deep. None of them are lip hooked. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Put him on top. 17 and a half. 17 on the dot. Get him, Fry! Uh-uh, he's bleeding. <laughs> Put him back. Oh, he is bleeding, you're right. All right. All right, I'm gonna stay on this side of the boat till Larry gets that fish in. There we go. Oh! <laughs> it's every cast. Every cast. So Larry, what is it that that uh, that drives these speckled trout to be in deep water this time of year? It's the spawn of the of, of the springtime. That fish spawn. It's you know the glass minnows show up in the ponds. You know they they move out the ponds in the in the deeper water when the croakers spawn. You know in March or so the uh, croakers will stay till probably end of May. Brown shrimp will come behind them and. Uh, the fish will stay, you know, in deep bowls until the, the brown shrimp start migrating out. Water temperature too has something to do with it. You know, once that water temperature gets in the mid 80s, those fish start to go outside and spawn. All right, and people think, okay, it's May. The fish inside in all these areas must be small. Uh, you know, today proved obviously that's not the case, but this is not an exception, is it? This is the way it is this time of year. Yes, I definitely so. The fish have, to me, not that, for all the years I've been fishing, the bigger on the bottom in the spring. Today we caught a real diversity of fish uh, in deep water and that's that's also typical isn't it? Yes, you know we had two big drum, we had two redfish, one large redfish, even a freshwater catfish all in the same holes. You can catch everything in the, in the marsh. And uh, in your last trip you also caught a bunch of flounder that's those are kind of more making a comeback right and you know years ago maybe five years ago you probably weren't catching many but now there's no question the flounder have come back. I mean, I've caught as many as seven in one trip, and I haven't caught seven flounder in one trip in a in, in number of years. But that may be some related to fresh water, you know, when we had high rivers and the, the spillway opening twice a year. I think that affects flounder fishing too, but when they got salt water, the flounder show up. When you're looking for deep water areas to fish, what are some things that you uh, kind of keep your eyes peeled for? Yeah, you just look for rolling water, you know, a boiling water where some water is being pushed up against a shelf, you know, and sometimes they want it down a shelf, but you just look where water's boiling and this juvenile bait that's in the water can't handle that current sometimes and it gets pushed up against these, these shelves where these fish will stack up and just it just gorge on on all the bait that's being pushed okay and you like double rigs uh ever since i've known you've been fishing with you, you you do use double rigs for this do you feel like the presence of two baits makes it more desirable for fish or do you just like the fact that you're getting down easier it gets down easier it's easy to fish on a windy day it's just something that I've always done my whole life. I, you know, I do throw a single here and there because some days they won't hit a double rig as opposed to they'll hit that single rig, you know, 10 to 1 or 10 to 2 and vice versa. Sometimes they're going to hit that double rig 10 to 2 compared to a single rig. So, but that's just something, you know, I've always stuck to. All right, last question. You've done this uh, at least a couple of decades. So far, how would you say this year is stacking up to some previous years? 
I think it's going to be a really, really good finish. You know, I've, I've been out six or seven times this year and uh, had success all seven times. Uh, but I think it's, it's going to wind up being a, a very good spring when it's said and done in June.